From the event center in San Jose, it's Mountain West basketball as the Spartans play host to the Broncos from Boise State as the regular season wraps up here at San Jose State on Campus Insiders. A look at the Mountain West Conference standings heading into this final day of the regular season. The Spartan spot at number 11 has been locked up. Meanwhile, though, for the Broncos, yes, they secured a first round bye with a win here recently against San Diego State. However, their position can be improved with another victory here to wrap up the regular season. Hi, everybody. Great to have you with us alongside Andy Glockner. I'm Ray Crawford. Yeah, they got the first round bye, but Boise State can improve things even more with a win. The bye is the thing, but you want to get as high as you can in the seeding, ostensibly play a a lesser team in the quarterfinals. They can get up to the two with a win here today and a loss by Fresno State. Uh, they have the tiebreaker in that matchup. All right, so the Broncos ride a three-game win streak in here to San Jose, and they're led by their leading scorer and rebounder in James Webb III. Yep, 16 points, 9.3 rebounds a game on the season. Has NBA scouts watching Boise State basketball this year. I'm excited to get a good in close and personal look at Webb today. He had 15 and 7 in a win over Nevada on Wednesday. The Spartans, meanwhile, they've lost six in a row. Frank Rogers, one of the few seniors to be honored here today. And a good redemption story. Rogers booted out of the program last year for some team violations of rules. Back this year, now the leading scorer and rebounder, and more importantly for such a young team with so many freshmen, has become a clubhouse leader for Dave Wojcik. Yeah, four freshmen that account for 45% of the Spartans scoring this season. Well, 27-2, and two, that's Boise State's record against San Jose State. We'll see if they can improve it. Tip-off is next. Here with you from the event center. Cheerleaders all set for this one. The pregame ceremonies honoring the three seniors on the roster for San Jose State. For visiting Broncos, they are led by head coach Leon Rice, 122 and 73 in his sixth season, leading, leading Boise State coming into this one. Five of the last six years here, Andy, this program has reached the 20 win plateau. Very, very impressive job. Obviously, Boise State, uh, known nationally for its football program. Leon Rice making it into a basketball school as well. Meanwhile, on the other side for the Spartans, Dave Wojcik, 17 and 72 in his third year trying to rebuild this program here at San Jose State. Yes, yeah, a long-term rebuild here. Finally feels like he has the foundation in place with this freshman class to move the program forward, and they are much improved this season from the first two in the Mountain West. Well, getting ready to tip this one off. There you get a look at Dave Wojcik. We had a very interesting conversation with him uh, prior to the start of the game. We'll be sharing some of that, I'm sure, throughout the broadcast here in this one tonight as he is nobody is more positive about this program than he is. James Webb the third. Frank Rogers set to tip it up. Eric Curry, Rick Batzel, Glenn Mary Mayberry, our officials. Great to have you with us here on Campus Insiders. We're underway here in San Jose, and it's Boise State who wins the tip. It'll be interesting to see how San Jose State defensively can do controlling the tempo of this game. They want very much to keep this a half-court game, keep Boise State out of. Charge immediately and 
James Webb looking down and holding his back. Not yeah. a good sign for the star. Not a good Boise sign State. at all. Yes, uh, we get another look here. Good help. Not sure he was fully there, but the, the bigger concern right now is uh, the health of James Webb the third. First couple seconds of the game, and their leading scorer and rebounder still on the floor. Boy, he is yet to get up as the staff will come out and take a look at him. Leon Rice, the head coach there too, and figured he'd probably mention a couple things to the ref while he's there too <laughs> about a player not having position, a dangerous play. Yeah, I think he uh, he said that, that was, first of all, not a charge, uh, <laughs> and I don't think it was, but that right on the tailbone and lower back, uh, he's up now walking a little gingerly, but hopefully he can stay in the ballgame. Unfortunately, kind of one of those undercut situations as Webb went up and whistled for the personal foul. It's been a great story for James Webb at Boise State. But uh, going back to the tempo point we started with, what uh, is very important to San Jose State today is to keep for, uh, Boise State out of transition. They think they can get beat that way. They think if they can make this into a half-court game that they have the athletes to be able to defend and keep in it. So Webb will go to the bench and uh, continue to get further observation over there, and we'll get our first look of the afternoon early for Nick Duncan, the 6'8 forward from Sydney, Australia. But on the Webb personal foul, the Spartans now with the basketball. It's one of those sensational freshmen and Cody Schwartz there with the basketball for San Jose State, number 33. Rodgers. I was going to say, it's interesting. Leon Rice uh, has been bringing Anthony Drimmick and also Nick Duncan off the bench. He referred to Duncan as his security blanket. Uh, had to go to the binky a little early today, though, uh, because of the injury to Webb. Indeed, and getting things going here is Princeton Onwas, one of those three seniors honored prior to the game, and he gets his final game here at the event center, started with a three-pointer. Uh, not really his specialty as a spot-up type guy, but knocked that one down, 3 nothing Spartans. 47% from the field, his own loss. Duncan tries to match it with a three of his own, and he does, and we're tied. Now, that is Duncan's specialty, an excellent shooter. You look at his body type, he doesn't look like that type of marksman, but a very, very good catch and shoot guy for Boise State. Duncan, a solid 42% from the floor. Pass inside, and a whistle. And they might have gotten Duncan here. No, actually, it's going to be Robin George. The German picks up his first personal foul. The team's second, obviously, to go along with the one from James Webb. Princeton Alwes has been very effective getting to the line this year, somewhere around 120 free throw attempts for the game uh, for the season, but not a very good shooter once he gets there. Only 57% mm -hmm. misses the first of two here. And that's something that they want to see improve. And, and, and notice the point here that no one at the key for San Jose State. We'll talk a little bit about that, too. They, they want to prevent this Boise State team slow down their transition game. Yeah, Dave Wojcik said in the pregame meeting that they were going to experiment with that today, not putting any rebounders on the line for free throws. They want to have four guys back to prevent easy transition baskets. Also look for them. Here's a steal and hope for the finish from Cody Schwartz. Oh, got caught in between. Well, Schwartz wasn't sure if he wanted to dunk it or not. He saw Duncan. The Schwartz was not with him on that attempt. <laughs> it was not. Inside is Mikey Thompson. His reverse shot is no good. Rogers comes away with it, trying to push the pace the other way, and he traveled. Rogers a little caught in between there, not 100% comfortable as the lead guy in transition. Um, but, uh, you know, when we look at here, here's the steal from Schwartz. And he sort of gets caught in between his steps here, a little challenge. Duncan runs underneath him, and he gets caught between a layup and a dunk attempt and ends up not making either. Schwartz, one of those talented freshmen here for Dave Wojcik this season, 6'8 freshman from Wisconsin. But to finish the point we were discussing, the free throw line, they're going to pull guys off and experiment with keeping guys back. Also on the offensive glass today, they're going to look potentially not to send anybody to the glass when certain shots go up, really try to make this a half-court game, slow down the tempo and make Boise score on them in the half-court. James Webb back into the ball game. That's good to see for the Broncos. You know, you get to this point of the season. I don't know if coaches admit anybody's 100% healthy. You just hope to be in the best condition that you possibly can. As the double team comes out on Thompson, who leaves it for Lonnie Jackson, who picks up his dribble. Left open on that far side is Thompson, unable to get the three to go down. Here come the Spartans. And it's Schwartz with it, and they're going to hit Jackson with his first personal of the afternoon. 
Now, we discussed this in the pregame. There is something at stake here for, for Boise State. They can get as high as the two seed in the tournament. But really, a game like this, health is paramount. You're going into a situation where you're going to have to win three games in three days to get to the NCAA tournament in Las Vegas this coming week. James Webb already coming off a knee injury. Yeah. So, you know, he's just rounding back into where they think they can play him full minutes if they need to. And to, to see, a, you know, an incident like that in the first five, ten seconds of the game, very difficult. That's the thing Boise State more than anything wants to avoid today. And Leon Rice told us, though, he wants they got a 10-guy rotation. I mean, they want to have deep guys in case something like that were to happen. You just don't want to walk into Las Vegas already down with your down your best score. Yeah, part of the reason that he's bringing Drimmick and, uh, and Duncan off the bench is to encourage some of the other rotation players to take a little bit more responsibility so in case of a situation like that, they can carry the load. And a whistle here. It looks like they're going to get Schwartz, I believe, on the block. Now live, that looked like more of a charge than the than yeah. the James Webb play. But let's take another look here. Uh, you know what? I, I that might have been. I, you're allowed to be moving laterally as long as you're in the space and you're squared up to the uh, to the driver. That was a lot closer, in my opinion, than than the one that James Webb got called for. Maybe the official was hearing Leon Rice preemptively <laughs> in his ear after the call on his star player to start the game. That's no good off the front of the room. Isaac Thornton comes away with it. To Schwartz between the circles, guarded by Jackson. Owen Wass, the senior, honored before the game, goes behind the back, tries to get fancy with it, and turns it over. Jackson with numbers. Thompson, off balance shot. Webb there, a sensational rebounder and scorer. He showed us both there. Now that's exactly the type of play that Dave Wojcik does not want from the Spartans. Not only a lack of ball security, which he was preaching in pregame, but a bad live ball turnover that led to a three-on-one run out and the putback finish. Hey. Rogers guarded by Webb at low post. Now that was an interesting move from Rogers, who's left-handed, usually goes over his shoulder into the lane from that block, tried to come back with the right hand there, not successful. Jackson whistle with the travel, so a turnover for Boise State. And more substitutions coming in for both teams. Wholesale here, really. Anthony Drimmick now checking into the ball game here for the Broncos. 27 points shy of tying the all-time record, scoring record at Boise State. Obviously, then 28 in this game would break the record. We talked to Leon Rice before the game as to whether he would give the leash, so to speak, for, uh, for Drimmick to try to get the record today. Uh, we'll see how the game situation unfolds. I think it would be preferable for everybody on Boise State if Drimmick had one of his hot spells and dropped about 25 in the first half to get it. Get it, get it done, yeah. that's right. Shot missed inside. Chandler, actually Brandon Clark on the miss. Harris Austin in the game. Leaves it for Hutchinson in there. And a good backdoor feed to Anthony Drimmick. And now he's 26 away from breaking the record. Very nice cut by Drimmick and a terrific dribble off the right wing, curl into the lane, and a nice find on the bounce. Clark out top, leaves it for Schwartz. Jalen James now into the game as well for the Spartans. As a sophomore in the program, he's probably one of the more <laughs> experienced guys that you're going to see today. At times, you're going to see four true freshmen on the floor for San Jose State as they continue to build up the talent level in the program. Onwas driving with three seconds to shoot. And a whistle. Foul, 14 fouls now for Boise State. The Broncos and Spartans get out to a quick start. It's Boise State with an early three-point lead. Back from San Jose State in a moment.
Well, what a career it has been for the Australian Anthony Drimmick, the redshirt senior. Difficulties with injury last year, had to have surgery, got a medical hardship for the NCAA, and here he stands. 26 points away from being the school's all-time leading scorer. I mean, anytime you're in the mix for a career honor like that at any school, you're, you're in uh, good company. Uh, Drimmick off a sensational year a couple of years ago. Never really pushed on from that. Injuries being obviously a part of that last year and, and to an extent this year as well. Uh, but still an excellent player and one of the biggest binge scorers in the Mountain West. He can get hot in, in a hurry. Well, and Leon Rice told us just a little while ago he saw him dunk in practice for the first time in a long time. So feeling strength and some confidence in that leg. Duncan from the corner for three. That's off the mark. Jalen James with the rebound. Yeah, as we look toward this week in Las Vegas, you know, uh, the Mountain West assumedly is a one-bid conference this year. Some people think San Diego State might get in if they don't get the auto bid. I'm not sure I believe that story. It depends on how everything else goes. So when you're San Jose State, you're looking at a situation. Nice baseline drive and dunk there from Brandon Clark. Very impressive. One of the freshmen from San Jose State shooting 64% from the field this year. But to go back to the, to the Boise State situation, I mean, you're really looking for these signs. You want James Webb to be healthy. You want Anthony Drimmick to be healthy. And they've got to be able to hold up not just for one game, but for 120 minutes potentially over three days. So it's a good sign that he saw that in practice. It's a grind, and it's one that you've got some leadership here for Boise State, including this young man, James Webb. He's been in those battles, and that's what you need in March. As he draws the foul, we take another look. Oh, this is nice. Good penetration here off the dribble from Jalen James. The feed to the baseline in the in the what the so-called dunk area, and Brandon Clark knew what to do with it from there. And Clark, we mentioned off the top a little while ago, four freshman key to the offensive scoring for San Jose State, and it's promising what lies ahead for this Spartans program next year and beyond. Yeah, they're starting to feel good about where they are. There's still a lot of challenges. I mean, San Jose State entered the Mountain West. I mean, this wasn't like a pre-made program that was coming into the history of success. They had, had a couple of decades of, of struggles in a lesser conference before they came into the Mountain West, which is a very, very difficult and well-funded league, especially at the top. So, you know, the expectation was that it was going to take a number of years to get the program where it needed to be. There's a, a terrific shot in the corner from Ryan Wellage, uh, another one of the uh, promising freshmen. Uh, and they feel like this is where they can kick on. They really have some optimism now that they've got some momentum in recruiting. They're fixing some of the things in the background in terms of infrastructure that they need to keep the program going, and, and they feel pretty good about where they are oh. in it. And a foul on the way up. So it's going to be in the act of shooting, so Nick Duncan will step to the line to shoot a couple. Cody Schwartz. Picked up with his second personal, the fourth for the Spartans. Actually, it's going to be Drimmick that drew the foul, so he will step to the line. He picks up his third point in the early going. Drimmick averages just over 13 points a game, but certainly not out of the realm of possibility for him to get to that 28 total. And break that record for the Broncos. He had 30 just a few weeks ago. A couple of times he scored 34 in his career. He had 22 in the win Wednesday at home against Nevada. So certainly a possibility as Gary Williams Jr. into the game, he knocks down his first bucket. That's where Gary Williams is most effective in transition type opportunities. Not really a good uh, shooter from half court type ops. But when you get him open on the wing, he can knock that type of shot down. Spartans back the other way. Webb the steal ahead to Dremick. A little bit too much on the pass. It goes out of bounds. And a turnover, giving the ball back to San Jose State. This is a good start from San Jose. First seven minutes, tempo is where they want it to be. Score only 11-10. That's a game they can they can win if this continues. Haven't been too sloppy with the ball. All of Dave Wojcik's early pregame keys are coming true so far for San Jose State for the most part. Meanwhile, for Boise State trying to maintain that energy. As it looks like they're going to hit Ryan Wellage. Actually, James Webb is going to get called for the foul. His second personal, so already two fouls, and he will go to the bench. A little bit of a rough start for Webb so far. The, uh, the early back injury, now two early fouls. He will sit down. We got Robin George, 6'10". Freshman from Berlin back into the ball game to spell Webb. Inbounds is nearly taken away in a jump ball as Drimmick 
sensing potentially if I keep reaching in here, I might get whistled for a personal foul. Let me get my hands out of there. Although the possession arrow stays with San Jose State, that could become a factor in the next jump ball, obviously. A L- little quick on the whistle there for my taste, but uh, that seems to be how college basketball calls it sometimes. <laughs> i try to prevent things escalating on those types of situations, perhaps. I love seeing Nick Duncan and George on the floor at the same time. A very uh, rugged-looking uh, front court approach <laughs> for right. Boise State. <laughs> Duncan's cut his hair since I last saw him last season. I love guys that play and are shaped like Duncan. He'll be killing it in corporate leagues, you know, when he's 35, just ripping from three. Uh, It's going to be fantastic. But he's a terrific player as well. Hutchinson gives it to Duncan. Speaking of size, a big fella turns over that left shoulder, misses, and goes out of bounds. Last touched by Boise State. Spartans will get it back. Yeah, you look at the media guy at photo. Duncan's got a little bit more hair. Maybe uh, got in the way a little bit of some of that shooting. You, know, you got to get, <laughs> get that out of there. Duncan, uh, I mean, you'd think he'd be a better post-up option than he really is. He's not a huge post-up guy, even at his size and his bulk. But when he do- does post-up, he's going to be on that right block, and he's going to try to come across the lane uh, like he did there with the left hook unsuccessfully. You know, Clark left open for the three and does what he should, drills it. He now has five points. As the Spartans increase their lead here by four. And a whistle and a foul. That's going to go against J.C. Hudson. Five team fouls for San Jose State. Spartans with a lead nearly midway through the first half. Back with more in a moment. San Jose State with the early lead here in the first half, 14 to 10 over Boise State. And if somehow they can ride this out the rest of the game and come up with a win, it'd be their first against Boise State as members of the Mountain West Conference. And just in the lifetime of the series, they've only beaten the Broncos twice. You know, this is a, it's an interesting test for Leon Rice's group. He talked about this being a trap game coming in here. Obviously not a ton of energy in the building and and not an enormous amount at stake for his team in this game. But this is also a a San Jose State team that they could play in their next game in Mm. in the Mountain West quarterfinals, depending on if if they end up as the three seed and and Boise, uh, excuse me, and uh, and San Jose State was to win their first round game, they'd end up playing Boise again. This is not the type of message you want to send to a San Jose State team, especially (laughs) we joked around about it. Boise State has a very quick turnaround to get out of here (laughs) after the game on a flight. Uh, So they were hopeful that, you know, they get out, you you get your run in, you, you, you play the way that you are capable of playing. They handled this team by 25 at home in the first meeting. And that's not to, to discount the improvement at San Jose State, but it's a, it's a team that, that Boise State should beat. And uh, they've come out with kind of a lack of energy and a, and a lack of enthusiasm for this game, and that's going to make it a much tougher proposition. For Which them. was key number one. Yeah. Uh, Leon Rice mentioned you have senior night and the emotions of that on Wednesday back home mm-hmm. in your in front of your home crowd, sending the seniors off for the win over Nevada. You've won three in a row. You get that first round by, but still, 
You want to have a great showing here in the final regular season game. Spartans turn it over. Dorsey State will get the basketball back. Not a great angle there on that entry pass. Duncan with a little bit of an overplay. Didn't deflect it, but then it ran right past and out of bounds. Neither team really shooting the lights out here to start this one. Boise State, though, just 5 of 15 from the field. Dremick, a perfect two for two. He had a nice reverse lay in here just a few moments ago. And a good cut right there, but can't finish. You know, we continue to revisit the keys of the game for San Jose State. They only have four turnovers so far, not a terrible number halfway through the first half. And also, although one of the baskets at least was sort of the, uh, the second chance result of a fast break, no fast break points yet for Boise mm. State. So they're accomplishing what they want to and keeping the tempo where they need it to be to win the game. I mean, they, they can win a game in the, in the high 50s, low 60s. They can't beat Boise State if they need to score 80. You know, we mentioned all those freshmen at San Jose State for Dave Wojcik. As Gary Williams Jr. fends off a defender and drops a couple, he now has four. And the lead is back in the Spartans' favor by two. Gary Williams has a 29% shot rate when he's on the floor for San Jose State, so not shy when he's on the field, uh, on the court. But uh, he's showing me a little bit more than what his stats say he can do. He's not usually a, a deep two jump shooter, but he's made a couple already today. Drimmick's three-pointer off the mark. Was out of bounds, last touch by the Broncos. So will be the Spartans with the basketball. And Dave Wojcik, get another look at him there. No one in, in talking to him, I mean, we almost had to end the conversation for him <laughs> to let him get on and get ready preparation for this game. He enjoyed sitting down, and we certainly did too. Talking to him, well-traveled. He's been in the game of basketball and the coaching business for a long time, and a nice deal at the other end with a lay and a little bit of a odd step there from <laughs> Zach Haney, but he's able to get two to go down his first bucket of the night. Yeah, Haney with uh, kind of the giggle on the way back up the court. That was not particularly fluid, but all points count the same in the scorebook. But you've got these freshmen that are so integral to the Spartans, not only this year, but the building of next year and beyond. But really, at this point, though, Andy, they're not really freshmen. These are guys that have played 28 games at the Division I level late in the season. Yeah, I mean, here <laughs> we're going to get some more entertainment here with the, uh, I don't know, is that a, uh, a fake Euro step? <laughs> Euro stepped on nobody almost, but, uh, uh, and giggling on the way back. He knew that wasn't uh, the most glorious. Another steal at the top of the key there by Haney, and another run out now for uh, Boise State. Kiba may have gotten away with a couple of steps. Was Hutchinson, but he draws the foul nonetheless. These are the baskets that, that San Jose State cannot give up in this game. The cheap twos off of turnovers at the top of the key, really unforced errors that are that are leading to runouts and points for Boise State. But again, you, you, you talked about the, the freshman play, and when you've got guys like Schwartz playing his 29th game, you've got Wellich playing his 29th game, you've got Bana, he's playing his 25th game. He's a freshman and is also a part of this, this group. And, and Clark, who's now playing in his 29th game, they've got more experience than sophomores do. They do, to, well, to an extent, but I'd also say they're tired. You know, mm -hmm. this is the end of a long freshman season for them. They've been playing a lot of minutes and carrying this team. And, uh, you know, we don't talk enough about the travel in this league. You know, teams like San Jose State or San Diego State, some of the coastal teams out here, uh, uh, Dave Wojcik was saying they had to make three separate trips into Denver this year to go play at Colorado State, to go play at Air Force, to go play at Wyoming. They had a road trip where they had to play at Utah State, also at Elevation, fly back here, and then the next day or two days later, fly back out and then take a two-and-a-half, three-hour bus ride up to, up to Laramie to play Wyoming. It's a very difficult travel schedule, and I think that's where some of this is catching up with the freshmen. But as you said, the enthusiasm is there. You know, when you inherit any program that was in the shape San Jose State was, and especially one that's coming into a new league that's way better than the league that you were in, there's going to be a time frame where you have to clear out, you know, the old players, the old roster you inherited that was suited for the old league. You have to start to sell kids on a vision here. There's still a long way to go. I mean, let's not, you know, let's not kid ourselves. This is a very difficult job that Dave Wojcik has. But you can see the promise. And now he can look at people for next year's recruiting class and say, we've got these kids in place. We're, we're, we're starting to grow our audience. Our, our crowds are starting to get a little bit better here. So there is some positive momentum, but it's, it's, a, it's a long way off for them to push into the top half of the table in this league. Well, for Boise State, Hutchinson one of two on his free throws at the other end. The Spartans, they drop a three-pointer from Isaac Thornton. He now has six. No, very nice. A little drive and kick, wide open from Thornton. Looked confident with that stroke, knocked it down. Spartans retake the lead. Thornton with that three-pointer. 
As the Spartans here, red hot from behind the arc, a perfect four for four. And Thornton leads all scores now with six. Thompson with a little jump step, didn't quite work out. He's whistled for the travel, and he'll give it back to San Jose State. Good call there, a little skip in the lane, a little indecisive there from Thompson once he cut in from the left wing. Thompson looking for his first points of the game, but that's another player for Leon Rice and Boise State, who's been a key part of what they've been able to do over the last number of years. A redshirt senior from Las Vegas, averages 12 points a game. Again, looking for his first points of this game tonight. A thousand point score. I mean, well, that says enough right there. 14th on the all-time scoring list at Boise State is number one in black for the Broncos. And a big block by Haney. Drivik back the other way, and he leaves it, and it's turned away in a great chase down block by Isaac Thornton, back the other way, the lob, that's no good. Is this gonna trickle out of bounds? Last touch by Boise State. We're getting, Boy, and we're getting crazy. And Thornton got tied up off that miss as the Spartans try to go back the other way on the chase down block and a nice job as the Spartans try to get it going the other way. This one goes out of bounds off the rim. Back and forth, come back with us to San Jose. All right, they're seeing blue here in San Jose State as the, this <laughs> Spartan. Uh, that might be tough to get off. That might take through the weekend. It might be a Monday morning before all that comes off. There might be a little tinge left uh, <laughs> after a day or two. A little but, around the edges. But no, no reason for San Jose State fans to be feeling blue with the Not effort of their team right now. That chase down block from Isaac Thornton, a little two-hand little two paddle off the backboard there, really, really impressive. Uh, but their team is, is competing well, and the game plan continues to work. You look at you know the box score, 19-17 right now, San Jose State. No offensive rebounds for the Spartans, but four for four from three-point range. And uh, you know a situation where they've kept, for the most part, Boise State in the tempo that they want to. Uh, a block shot there and a couple of top-of-the-key steals have hurt them. But other than that, they're, they're getting pretty good looks, shooting 50% from the field, and they've been patient. Well, Duncan. Very nice take Clark, there. Clark a couple of steps, and he takes advantage. No, I, li I like him. They're very high on Brandon Clark. He's been very, very effective around the rim this season. Uh, one of the better of the freshman group. He now has seven points. And this one for San Jose State. Trimmick, reverse, no good. Rogers comes away with it. For three. Off the back of the iron. Too strong, but it's Clark who grabs the rebound. Thompson unable to put two hands on it. So a fresh shot clock for Thornton and the Spartans. First second chance opportunity of the game for the Spartans as they reset top of the key. And then here's another one of those live ball turnovers that is going to lead to a run out and probably a layup here for Drimmick. Oh. Oh, oh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That looked like that one might have been coming off yeah, the rim there, know. Andy. They're I mean there whistle. was there was no need for the San no need yeah. for San Jose State to touch that as it clearly was not going to go down. We'll have to see if it actually came off the rim. Live, I agreed with you. I thought that was off the rim, but sort of a, a needless play here to concede two points. 
Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> it looked like he was coming off the Yeah, rim. I don't know about that, but no, no reason to touch it. And Rodgers, when he got up there, he regrettably tried to pull his hand back at the last moment. Driving nice baseline move. Ryan Wellich, the freshman from Greensburg, Indiana. And then took some sort of a blow to the face there. Uh, let's see, did he catch his contact? You know, normally we see, that's when we see everybody looking around <laughs> on the floor. On the floor. floor. He this, caught it. This that's floor would be hard, too, to find, <laughs> find the contact. It might be, be one of the Spartans' masks or... Yeah. Scores a baseline. Uh, I think I think you're right. I think he did catch the contact. His contact. <laughs> Get another look. That is a, a oh, oh. Okay, that is a very nice and one. The finger to the eye comes down. Making sure everything's all set here for Wellage. You know, it's interesting. You get a close-up of Wellage here. I mean, this is also what you're dealing with. We talked about freshman fatigue. I mean, not not that Ryan Wellage is not a good athlete, but you can see he's still got a freshman body. You know, he, they're going to put on some weight. They're going to get in a strength program at the college level and put on some size. So this is where you see kids kick on to sophomore and junior. They, they've done pretty well as freshmen. When you're relying this heavily on freshmen, you're going to take your lumps on that. Wellage averages nearly 11 a game as slicing and scoring there is Thompson for his first two of the afternoon. Yeah, that's a little bit more like it for Mikey Thompson. He is uh, he needs to do a little bit more of that in this game. Uh, he's a very, very good free throw shooter, has over 125 free throw attempts on the season, makes north of 80% of them. So it's good to see him get off the bounce. Easy layup for him there. Three-pointer off the mark from Owen was. and a nice backdoor feed oh, and one for Beautiful Thompson. Well, Mikey Thompson cutting in perhaps his second point, second bucket. Montego Alford actually now in the game as he scores on the lay-in. That's nice. Takes the contact, shields the ball there, goes glass, gets the bounce, going to the free throw line for the conventional three-point play. I'll take that. A 78% free throw shooter is Montego Alford, the redshirt senior from Carson, California. So an unusual miss on the three-point opportunity. Tough to keep him and Thompson apart a little bit. The two with the black undershirts. You got to look down at the shoes. Purple numbers jumping off the all-black jerseys. I like what I see from Brandon Clark so far. You can see, uh, compared to, to Wellage also, we pointed that out, uh, Clark has a more of a filled out body, a little stronger, used to playing closer to the rim. Looks like he's got a good touch though, can put the ball on the floor a little bit, go with both hands. Very impressive so far. That's gonna be the eighth team foul, so now a bonus situation. Of course, Boise State will be Nick Duncan at the line. Front end, a 76% free throw shooter. He's made 175 career three pointers, has Duncan, the junior. Looking for his fifth point of the afternoon on the make here. And he's got it. Give Nick Duncan five points, the junior from Australia. And he ties the game once again at 25. The last time these two teams met, it wasn't even a close game with Boise State. In fact, San Jose State never had one lead, they trailed the entire game. So for the Spartans here to be going toe to toe, back and forth with one of the better teams, top easy top three, perhaps one of the top two teams in the league. It's good for them here in this final game of the regular season, their final game here at the Events Center. Good aggressive move there from Jalen James. Gets the rebound on his own attempt, back up, got fouled. And, and to, to your point, you know, the, the San Jose State team, I, Dave Wojcik talked to us earlier about you know, uh, the need to have a physicality, a good mentality, strength and, and mentally here. This team has actually not been that bad defensively over the course of the season, where they've struggled, uh, and again, understandably because of so many freshmen, where they've struggled is offensively. So the game you mentioned in Boise, uh, they, they do not have a chance to beat a Boise State or a Fresno State that, that they did handle here by double digits. They don't have a chance to win an 80-78 game against a team like that. But right now we're sitting here five minutes left in the first half. 25-25, they could take the lead here on a free throw. This is the type of pace and scoring tempo that will give San Jose State a chance uh, to stay in this game and potentially take it. 
Well, James knocks them both down, a 69% free throw shooter this season. First two points of the game and another lead here for San Jose State. You'd like to see a little bit more energy here from Boise State. They mm -hmm. just, you know, you get sucked into this environment and the tempo that San Jose State is successfully holding them to. They haven't made, they've made one three so far today. There's another miss from Alford. Now here's a, a semi runout opportunity and an open three from the wing here for Gary Williams. Uh, not, not, uh, not his best effort there. Uh, and then now they got to get back. But you know, this again, this is a Boise State team that uh, that a lot of people think can win the auto bid this week. Mm -hmm. um, and you want to see a little bit more from them. You could say that this game doesn't have a lot of importance to them, but they've been a little indecisive, a little ragged. Here's another charging foul. Uh, I want to see a little bit more fluidity and a little bit more energy from the Broncos. They had Chandler Hutchinson on the clear out as you get a look. It's his first personal foul. And now a timeout here as Boise State and Leon Rice want to talk it over a little bit. Rice, we mentioned in his sixth year, 20 and 10 to win number 20 for the fifth time in the last six years. It happened Wednesday in a victory over Nevada. Last year's Mountain West Coach of the Year. And uh, doing a terrific job. I mean, 20 wins doesn't mean quite as much as it used to in the grander scheme of college right. basketball with so many games. But at a program like Boise State, it means a lot. I mean, you're talking about a program that really didn't have very much history before this recent surge. Um, and, and he's done a terrific job in a conference where, uh, you know, increasing that level of performance has been demanding since they came over from the WAC. Back with more from San Jose in a moment. The Spartans, plenty to cheer about, strike up a two with a two-point lead with 4.18 to go. Ray Crawford along with Andy Glockner. Glad to have you with us here on this Saturday on Campus Insiders. Boy, it's been an exciting Mountain West Conference season and a lot of stuff yet to be determined here throughout the day in the conference and some key games coming up later tonight in the league as well. A very unpredictable season. Obviously, the top-end quality is not what it has been in the last several years. This is a league that three seasons ago had five NCAA yeah. tournament bids. Uh, may very well be a one-bid situation this year, but that doesn't mean it hasn't been competitive. There are some good teams in the league, and as you said, very little is set. San Diego State is the champion of the one seed. I believe the 10 and the 11 seeds are set for the tournament. Everything else still up in the air because of how closely bunched a lot of these teams are. Well, and now an offensive call here going against San Jose State. We discussed about Dave Wojcik's philosophy of shooting and getting guys back to prevent the transition. It, it works with the two-point lead, but also you got to be shooting pretty good if you're going to vacate the rim and not go for any offensive rebounds. And 10 for 21, they're doing pretty good. Oh, nice little up and under there for Duncan. But yeah, I agree with your point. The, 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 the plan is working uh, for Wojcik and San Jose State. If, if they're going to shoot this rate, and again, that's where they struggle. You know, this is a team that struggles offensively. They had a spurt in, in league play 
um, with the uh, the two wins that they had against Air Force and Fresno State and a couple of games after that, they held four teams in five games to .87 points per possession or fewer. And that's tremendous defense, especially for a team that's relying on so many freshmen. They got lit up a couple of times lately as fatigue has started to set in. But they're capable on this end of the floor, so he's basically using their strength and trying to negate the strengths of Boise State, a transition-oriented, want to get out and run, high-scoring, outscore you type team. And so far, so good with three minutes left in the first half. Well, Thompson guarded great inside there by Rogers. Now, got a whistle. Looks like Nick Duncan might have, yeah, a, he might might have, have a, a little blood there. Dare I say he might have a Nick that they're, uh, they're yeah. checking out there. <laughs> 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 Looks okay, though. Well, he got knocked down, and it was slow to get back yeah. on defense. Might have got taken a shot to the bridge of the nose or the eye. So I don't know, they're saying maybe to the lip, maybe a little bit of blood there. So he's going to have to go to the bench and get that looked at. There's going to be Zach Haney who comes into the game for Boise State in Duncan's spot. So we approach three minutes to go here in the opening half. And this is precisely the game, I would think, that Dave Wojcik wanted to see here against Boise State. And he talked to us early, and there's a shot and a good bucket by Clark, and he'll go to the line as he draws contact on the way up. And Clark putting together quite a good afternoon now with 11 points and a chance to add to it. Four rebounds as well, critical uh, around the rim, good finisher. Again, 64% shooter this year as a freshman. So when he gets his mitts on the ball around the rim, he knows what to do with it, trying to complete the three-point play here. 67% free throw shooter is Clark, and he's good on that one. His first free throw of the afternoon. Nick Duncan checks back into the ball game as Zach Haney came onto the floor for a moment, picked up another personal foul, a second, and goes right back to the bench. You know, when you're an underdog like a San Jose State in a game like this, you look at the game in sort of mini chunks, you know. So now we're at three minutes or two, 235 now left in the first half. You have the lead. You have a run out here that you want to try to finish. Now a three-point lead with 230 left in the game. This is a crucial juncture for San Jose State. They played a very good first half. You want to close it out the right way, not let, as, as Dave Wojcik said, uh, Boise State an 8-0, 10-0 run to close it and, and eliminate all the good work you've done for 18 minutes now. Williams with the bucket. Now has six. Clark leading all scores though with 12. And a drive and a block there by Clark, but he's actually going to be hit with the personal. Might have been Jalen James with the body first. I like Clark's activity there. Nice rotation over on the help defense. Looked like a clean block from Clark. I think it, the, it was on Jalen James on the bump here first. Because that was a terrific play by Clark. I, I don't think that was anything he did. Some contact, yeah, you're right. James picks up his second. Boise State just looks flat, Ray. I, I, you know, there's no real way to sugarcoat this at this point. They've been lulled into a type of game that they're not particularly proficient at, um, and they've been getting hurt by some people that, you know, they probably shouldn't be hurting them in the way that they are. Uh, I would imagine the halftime conversation is going to be quite animated from Leon Rice mm. and his staff. Look, this is something that he was, again, one of the first keys was to maintain the enthusiasm and the energy. They've had some emotional wins and some big time atmospheres. You go on the road, you beat San Diego State and they're building a place that puts 12 plus in every game. You have that kind of atmosphere. You play at UNLV, big games like that. And then he's worried about the energy and a great block at the other end. The Spartans back the other way and the miss, but the tip in on the follow. Brandon Clark, energy From Brandon again. Clark. And now uh, 14, uh, 14, 14 points. points on the game. Um, but it was interesting. Frank Rogers there, it looked like they were coordinating pretty well in the, in the transition defense, three-on-three -three situation. Then it looked like Rogers didn't pick up ball in time, but great recovery on the block to lead to the run out in the other direction. It's a 7-0 run for San Jose State. Duncan picks up his dribble. That's a walk, yep. He picked up his foot, too. Yeah. So now... So a great defensive play at one end by the senior in Rodgers, and then in transition back the other way. You see, Duncan found the body there, but the second guy in never found anybody who put a body on Clark. I mean, Boise State's awareness in this half and the energy level has just not been there. Clark now leading all scores with 14, and Andy, his season high, career high for the freshman is 18. 
So he's putting together quite a first half and a big reason why San Jose State enjoys a five-point lead with under a minute to go. That's a little unfortunate there. Rogers called for the illegal screen. San Jose State was in position to go for a two-for-one opportunity now. Now Boise State will probably get that chance, take a shot here in the next 15 seconds of the clock, and they should get an extra possession out of this. Lonnie Jackson into the game. An interesting story with Jackson, already has his degree, graduated from Boston College, decided to transfer out for his final season. So kind of a one and done player here for Boise State, but the experience he's gonna bring to this team this season into the postseason as well, having played in the ACC. A great uh, block there again by Clark, and maybe a great decision getting away from BC, given how, how this season went for them in the it's ACC. 0-18, uh, huh? Unbelievable. Play, yeah, maybe, maybe he uh, saw that coming. Oh, man. Got out just in time. Certainly did. San Jose State great and fantastic on the defensive end with four block shots. So you know that's got to start to creep into the mind of the Broncos as they get in there tied to the rim. So you start getting back on defense, you're going to get guys around the rim to defend the bucket. Jackson drives from the corner is Alford. That's no good off the mark. James comes down with it, but loses the basketball. Spin new move there by Hutchinson, and he's going to draw the foul. Unfortunate. They looked like they had a five-point lead at the half at least going into the break. Maybe an opportunity to get a run out and go to seven or eight. Now you're putting Boise State back on the line after not securing the uh, possession after the defensive rebound. So James, the first on either team to reach three personal fouls. Jazz just two points. Both of those coming at the free throw line. Hutchinson makes the first of two, now has six points. 63% free throw shooters, the sophomore from Mission Viejo. Well, he had a nice game. We talk about San Diego State and the comeback, which. Oh, he was huge. He was huge, he was huge in that game. that game. They won that game without Webb, who was out with the knee injury. Yeah. The win of Viejas without your best player is fantastic. Hutchinson had 16 points in that one. Started the first seven games of the year. As the final shot, no good for San Jose State as time expires here in the first half. But San Jose State with a stunning start here in their final game of the regular season. They lead Leon Rice and the Broncos by 3. 34-31 is our score at the break. Boise State in trouble on the road. Back with more from San Jose in a moment.
MLS halftime report. We hope you're enjoying the game between Boise State and San Jose State. The regular season is coming to a close and the Mount West tournament starts their first round action right here in Campus Insider starting on Wednesday, March 9th. And as we look ahead to the tournament, we welcome in Jesse Kurtz of the Mountain West Network. And Jesse, the brackets aren't set yet, but San Diego State likely the one seed. Who matches up best with the Aztecs? I think you look right at the number two seed. Fresno State is one of the teams that has actually beaten the Aztecs this year, and they got star power. Marvell Harris, one of the top players in the country, is going to be one of the top players in the running for the Mountain West Player of the Year. And then Julian Lewis has really stepped to the forefront as a, as a number two and a number three option for the Bulldogs. They've got the backcourt, they've got the star power, and they've got one of the coaches of the year in uh, the Mountain West in Rodney Terry. So the Fresno State Bulldogs will be one team that certainly will give the Aztecs a run in Las Vegas. Fresno State, not a dark horse team, but Jesse, can you give me a dark horse team that could go on a run? I think you look at the University of Nevada, although I'll tell you, two through nine, it's really wide open this year. But if you're looking for one team, I think you look at the University of Nevada. Here's a team that's won five of their last seven. They got four guys who are uh, averaging in double figures when it comes to scoring the basketball. And you look at Cameron Oliver, maybe one of the leaders to be the freshman of the year in the Mountain West, has a chance to finish the season with a double-double average. He'd be the first to do that in a long time uh, in the Mountain West as a freshman. So they certainly have what it takes to be one of those dark horses, and we saw that happen with the University of Wyoming last year. Yeah, Kim Oliver has been all kinds of impressive. Speaking of Wyoming, they were the champions last year. What would it take for the Cowboys to repeat? Simply Josh Adams has to go off. He's the lone senior on that team, and we saw what he did last year. He was the MVP of the Mountain West Tournament. He single-handedly, along with Larry Nance Jr., but Josh Adams was sensational last year. Yeah, Adams, an endless motor. Nevada, back to Nevada, was 9-22 and last season. They're sitting at 18-11 and overall right now. Taking on New Mexico in their final regular season game. How impressive of a job would you say, Jesse, has Eric Musselman done in Reno? He is going to be one of the top coaches when it comes to the coach of the year voting. Not sure if he's going to get it, but he's certainly in the conversation, doubling up the wins, as you said, from 9 to 18. They've been in the mix all year. They're going to be a, a top four team in the Mountain West. And he, uh, Musselman has said this is the favorite team that he's ever coached. When it's all said and done, is going to be one of the top two or three candidates for Mountain West Coach of the Year, and he certainly deserves it, taking this team from nine wins to 18. Got a chance to get 20 wins when it comes to the Mountain West Tournament. Yeah, unbelievable. Well, Jesse, this might be the most important question, so are you ready for this? What's your favorite thing to do in Vegas away from the Thomas & Mack Center? Eat, eat, and more eat, and I think that's uh, maybe my wife's least favorite thing to do, at least when it comes to me, because we have to buy new clothes, but there's no better place in the nation to sample new food and really indulge uh, at the dinner table than Las Vegas, and we'll do plenty of that in our trip. Sunshine and food, right up my alley. Jesse Kurtz, thanks so much for the time. Looking forward to the Mountain West Tournament. Appreciate the time, Shay. And we're also looking forward to Selection Sunday. We break down all 68 teams in 60 seconds, only right here on CampusInsiders.com. Now let's send it back to San Jose State and the second half.
Time here at San Jose State. The Spartans with a slim three-point lead here at the half. Welcome back, Ray Crawford here with Andy Glockner after the first half of play in a first half where we saw eight ties, six lead changes. This certainly plays early on, I think, in the Spartans' favor. Yeah, it's been an interesting performance from both teams. Boise State does not look like one of the best teams in the league. Very, very sloppy. As you can see here, Anthony Drimmick couldn't chase down that outlet pass. Uh, another a couple of opportunities here. A, a back cut to, a, to the green, misses the rim entirely. Here he gets a shot blocked. The energy level has just not been here for the Broncos, and you can see here now it led to a run out for San Jose State, who has played very, very well. So uh, I think Boise State, it'll be interesting to see the first few minutes of this half when they come out, what type of energy they bring, because it wasn't there in the first half. They just shot 37% in the first half. Meanwhile, for San Jose State, I'll tell you what, they're dropping it from distance, and these freshmen, Isaac Thornton, Brandon Clark, and company, really coming on in the first half. Not a good offensive team, but they hit their first four threes of the day, which helped. Uh, and then uh, they, the Brandon Clark has been terrific. Here is the kick outside to Thornton for one of those threes. Uh, and 14 points and five rebounds for the freshman. Very impressive in the first half. Four for seven for the Spartans in the first half from distance. And they enjoy a three-point lead at the break. Back with more in a moment. Just a few moments away for the start of the second half here in San Jose and Andy as we take a look at these first half statistics. Boy, one number that jumps off the page right away is Boise State in the three-point shooting and uh, you know, obviously rebounding too as a big difference in this one. We don't see that number there on the screen, but actually Boise State's being out-rebounded, which I think is unusual for them. 
Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, San Jose State's doing a pretty good job on its defensive glass. You pointed out the one for eight three-point shooting for Boise State. Uh, and San Jose State shooting 40, 45% from the field, a number that they certainly can live with in this game. I, I think in the second half it's going to come down to two things. One, it's going to be overall energy for Boise State. I just don't think it was there in the first half. Second, um, James Webb only played six minutes in the first half, took the, uh, the, f the big heavy fall in the first possession of the game, then picked up two fouls, went to the bench. Uh, they're going to need a lift from their best player, 16 points, nine rebounds a game, only right now with four and four at the break. Well, the two teams get ready to start the second half. A reminder, visit CampusInsiders.com daily to watch Rewind, featuring exclusive coverage of college sports, including highlights and top plays, player performance reels, and must-see compilations from teams in the Mountain West, available daily on CampusInsiders.com. Hardworking staff back in Chicago putting all the excitement together for you, and we do them in really consumable bites. That's a big buzzword in social media these days, something that's easily consumable. Most of the videos are a minute or less. You can kind of really get caught up on the day and some of the top performances and plays. As uh, James Webb the third, the leading scorer, leading rebounder here for Boise State. And this was the very first, just moments into the ball game, he hits the deck hard. Yeah, first possession of the game. Got called for a charge for his uh, <laughs> for his trouble as well. Not sure that that was really what happened there, but uh, more importantly for him, landing right on the small of his back. Uh, came out of the game for a little bit, came back in, picked up a second foul, and as we discussed, only played six minutes in the first half. So uh, he should be fresh, and uh, and frankly, Boise State needs his energy and his scoring in the second half. Well, you see him stand up. He was sitting on the bench, a part of the starting five here. So it appears as though he will start, indeed, the second half Webb with the four points, but throughout this season has been a big part, really the last couple of years, a Mountain West Conference Player of the Year candidate, preseason first teamer, a redshirt senior from Augusta, Georgia, who averages, you know, 16 points, 9.3 rebounds a game, and he's been Brandon out, Clark, yeah. four points shy of a career high. He's being outdone by a freshman. Today, James Webb is 14 points, five rebounds, and a lot of activity in the first half from Brandon Clark. Also, uh, with one block, it felt like he had three or four. That's how active he's been on both sides around the rim. On cue, James Webb gets to the free throw line. A good start here for Boise State and for their best player. And Clark hit with his first personal foul. Webb looking to add to his point total of just four points he had in the first half. Again, the leading scorer, leading rebounder this season for the Broncos. 67% free throw shooter and makes the second. He now has five in the game. And for them to come back, really, which you would be surprised to say about this Boise State team playing last place San Jose State, it's going to be a comeback effort here for the Broncos, and they're going to need James Webb to help them do that. From San Jose State's standpoint, it's interesting. The box score at the, at the half said they had 12 turnovers. It didn't feel like that much in the flow of the game. There were a few late in the half that really boosted that number. I thought for about 16 or 17 minutes, they did a really good job with ball security. They're going to need to be a little bit more efficient on that aspect to, to win the game. Well, Anthony Drimmett gets the start here in the second half for Boise State. He was defending Rodgers, who was able to make it. Very nice there, a little, little, uh, Here comes Webb. little spin to the baseline, a little baby hook for Webb. Uh, good to get him touches early. they got to get him back in the flow. Tie game now, 19 minutes to go. That's a good sign for Boise State to get Webb going early here in the second half. Rodgers off the window and right around Webb. And Webb, again, with those two personal fouls, he wants to stay out there on the floor. And a decent awareness from, from Rodgers there. And, you know, used the ball fake instead of settling for the elbow jumper, put it on the floor, took it right near Webb, and, and got a better look off glass for two. And hard to believe it's the first two points for Rodgers, the leading scorer for the Spartans at 12 points per game. Averages nearly seven rebounds, but just two points so far in this one. I'm always entertained by lefty players also. I think uh, left-handed players, in my opinion, average three or four more points a game than right-handed players just because people forget. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden you're in the heat of the game and all of a sudden the guy makes a post move that's counter to what you think he's going to or he drives left and finishes and you're like, wait, what happened? Frank Rogers is left-handed or shoots, <laughs> or shoots it lefty. Great, great point. And, uh, you know, so first two of the half and uh, as you said, 12 points a game, they're going to need a little bit more from him as well. Driving and blocked by Montego Alford. 
A little guard on guard violence there. Yeah. But again, San Jose State getting back well in transition. That was a semi-transition opportunity there. Good discipline from the Spartans. And now they're requiring Boise State to take them apart in a, in a half court set where Boise State is not quite as proficient. Onwas knocked out of the hands of Webb, goes out of bounds. It will stay at this end for the Broncos. The tire potentially take the lead with a three. And they've not really been successful in at least in the first half. Webb will try it from distance. That one off the back of the iron comes out strong to Rogers. Rogers grabs his third rebound of the afternoon. San Jose State still clinging to this two point lead, looking to add to it. Just underway. 250 gone here in the second half. Schwartz. That one rims in and out. Nick Duncan comes away with it. Drimmick going to build on his seven points. Again, he is 21 away from becoming the school's all-time leading scorer. Thompson, his shot rims in and out. Thornton with the basketball, guarded by Alford. Up top for Clark. Guarded by Drimmick. Clark with a little spin move as Duncan gets a hand on it, perhaps taking the timing away off the shot. And the shot is no good from Clark. Duncan baseline lay in, yes. Yep, good call on the blocking foul there. Nice drive from Duncan, got to the baseline. Rotation, rotation a little bit late, didn't square up. Blocking foul and one. Let's take another look at that right here. Good, put it on the floor, got to the Baseline left-handed dribble and, and beat the defender to the spot. Good call by the ref, three-point play opportunity. Big fella making the move, and Duncan at the line with an opportunity to complete the three-point play. 76% free throw shooter is Duncan. Perfect two for two so far today. Misses his first of the afternoon. I have Duncan's body type, but I'm about a foot shorter. <laughs> so I, I love seeing guys like that put the ball on the bounce and, and beat a guy to a spot deceptively quick in that situation. He is. Leads the way in scoring so far for Boise State with seven. Actually nine, give him nine points. And the whistle. You know, not that, like San Jose, Hutchins. not that San Jose State is a great posting team, but you were looking at an opportunity there where Cody Schwartz was trying to establish position on the block. I'd like to see a little bit more patience from San Jose State there. They went away from it, swung the ball back to the top of the, of the arc there as he was trying to get set. Maybe give him another second there, get position, get it into him, see what he can do and operate from that uh, part of the court. Hutchinson's good on the first of two. Hutchinson picked up his second personal foul. Actually, it's Onwas at the line. Onwas makes them both. Colorado State has defeated Air Force, and so the Rams still remain in the mix uh, for the 6, 7, or 8 seed, according to Jeff Grammer, uh, New Mexico beat writer on Twitter. So another possible opponent for Boise State, depending on how this game goes as well. You know, and that's a, you know, we talk about the, the tournament. We're talking about a one, uh, you know, one bid scenario potentially. Nice move there by James Webb. A team like Colorado State is not a team that you necessarily want to play in the quarterfinals mm -hmm. because, you know, I mean, you're talking about a, a binary thing here. You either win or you lose. Colorado State has a lot of variance to it. They have, a, you know, performances this year that have been terrible, and they have performances this year that have been very, very imposing. I would rather play a more known entity than a Colorado State team like them with a lot of experience and guys, upperclassmen, and, and a good coach with Larry Eustachie. So it'll be interesting to watch how the seeding ends up. Duncan scores again, now again, a team leading 11 points for the junior from Australia. Previous trip down for San Jose State, it was Wellich. Picks up two more. I do like the fact that San Jose State is not settling for jump shots. They know they're not a particularly good jump shooting team. They are looking to attack on the bounce. Now here's the patient. Now I think you had a, a little lob pass over the top there. You know, the post up from Wellich. They still haven't gotten in the ball, and now you're up against the clock a little bit in the final 10 seconds here and get a wild shot like that. Don't like that possession. Probably didn't need to take the, oh, I guess they didn't hit the rim on the first one, so they need to get something up. But I, I just think that, I mean, look, you're seeing the, the flaws in the team 
you've, you've seen the flaws in the team that, that just going through this learning development together, especially on the offensive end. Well, Boise State, after shooting Cole in the first half, they've made three of their last three from the floor, and it's tied at four. Campus Insiders is the best assist for filling out your winning bracket. Watch the 68 and 60 series on CampusInsiders.com for everything you need to know, including one-minute previews of each and every 68 teams in this year's tournament. Before you fill out your bracket, visit CampusInsiders.com. That's coming up on Selection Sunday. Our very skilled and adept Jordan Cornett will be turning in some long hours on Selection Sunday to log all those team previews. Lock him in our studio. Can't leave until he has previews of everybody. Anthony Drimmick with a nice reverse lay-in and a two-point lead here for the Broncos. This is starting to feel like a little bit of a dangerous time in this game for San Jose State. 14 minutes left. Broncos now back up by two. We were talking before the break about how I think the, 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 the lack of patience on the offensive end and the stats are starting to manifest it out. At the four-minute timeout in the, in the first half, we were talking, uh, well, let's look at the Drimmick play for a second here. Nice, nice bounce pass on the move from Nick Duncan and a tough finish from Drimmick, who really hasn't been that effective around the rim today. But at the four-minute timeout in the first half, San Jose State was shooting 10 of 21 from the field, nearly 50%. Uh, now they are at 15 for 38 from the game, so five of their last 17. Uh, a sloppy turnover there leads to a run out, and you sort of see the game being taken away from San Jose State, not on their defensive end, but on the offensive end of the floor. And it's coupled on the Hutchinson layup, a 6-0 run over the last minute and 20 seconds. And these are the spurts that Dave Wojcik had been aware of. This is the first one we've seen from Boise State in this game. Got to stem the tide here. And a good way to do that is a strong drive to the rim and the finish. Beautiful, beautiful drive by Gary Williams. Yeah, Gary Williams, Jr. Nice, got off the bounce, got his shoulder passed, and a good, strong finish over Nick Duncan right at the rim. Very well done. Good job for Williams. He now has eight points. This will be his first free throw attempt of the afternoon. Not sure about the hairstyle there. I like the finish better than the uh, uh, the little rat tail or whatever the they call that these days. Yeah, a little something something on the back. But uh, completes the three point play. Very important possession there for San Jose State. Now back within one. 84 percent free throw shooter is Williams. He now has nine points. Second leading score to this point with Clark's 14 on the bench. Webb uh, going up strong and draws the foul. Yeah, San Jose State got caught in a bad rotation there, and the ball ended up in a bad spot for them with Webb as people were scrambling to get back in position here. You see at the top of the key here, you see two guys scrambling to get back in position. They found Webb on the short corner there, um, and uh, hard foul prevented the, uh, the potential three-point play there. But uh, good ball movement from Boise and a miscommunication at the top uh, that led two passes away to uh, Webb having the opportunity. Williams hit with the personal. Webb makes the first. Of two, he now has 10 points. Webb four, four, five from the stripe in this one. As he gets into double figures. And he makes the second. 
Now ties Duncan for the team lead with 11 points. And he continues to grow that lead in the Mountain West, his 12th double figure game. James. Guarded out top by Austin. And with the shot clock down to three, it's Williams' shot that goes off the rim and out of bounds. So it will be Boise State's basketball. Williams was open there on the right wing, a dribble or two prior to that. But then again, Williams is not a particularly good shooter from that range. Uh, you know, the old uh, classic, you're open for a reason. So another good defensive possession from Boise State. Now an opportunity here, although they sloppy turnover for Williams. And here's the run out of the the dunk from Williams. So not just the two points, but gets this small, cozy crowd a little bit more excited. And that's the energy that if you're Leon Rice, you want to try to prevent from growing into some kind of a run in a spurt here for the Spartans. Uh, I think the word is intimate. I think that's the uh, the atmosphere here today. Yes. It's sort of like, you know, it's a an indie band doing a concert in a smaller venue. I kind of like it. Crowd's into it. Oh, good uh, a sloppy catch there, obviously. Loose ball, good run out. Dunk from Gary Williams. Uh, those are the types of turnovers that Boise State has been feasting on, this time at San Jose State with the two. Schwartz, the freshman now with four personal fouls. So he will go to the bench, but not before being intercepted by Dave Wojcik to get some instruction. Creative encouragement, I'm sure. Duncan backs in on Clark, or Rogers rather, and has it taken away. Williams, guarded by Paris Austin. Under 12 minutes to go now. Spartans trail by one, an opportunity to obviously take the lead. Pass into Clark, goes up strong, nice hesitation midair to get around the block attempt from Webb. I'm really intrigued to see what Brandon Clark's going to become in the next couple of years here because he's already very, very good moving without the ball. Good, fi oh, good, good finish, uh, good finish uh, around the rim. Very, very good, good hang time here. Gets the ball, seals, goes up strong, takes a little bit of contact and finishes at the rim. Very, very nice play. Sanders has fans covered in March with NCAA tournament round-by-round -round highlights and game preview. Stay up to date with the upsets in March action on CampusInsiders.com starting Thursday, March the 17th. And it will be upon us quickly, won't it? Best time of the year if you're a college basketball fan. Uh, I mean, I love the whole season, but uh, obviously conference tournament time and then March Madness, it doesn't get much better than that. Are you going to be going to a venue this year? 
It's going to be, looks like, uh, in Chicago. Okay. I'll be at the Denver sub-regional. Hey, all right. Yeah, a little home game for me, so yeah, not, no not too bad there, yeah. Likewise. Look forward to seeing who's going to be in that regional. you got you, teams uh, potentially like Utah. Yeah. You know, will be a headliner there. I'm interested to see them in person. So it uh, should be a lot of fun. Well, we're fortunate at Campus Insiders World Headquarters. You can actually see it from our rooftop, the United Center. A short walk there if it's a good day. It's starting to turn anyway there in Chicago. The weather is this winter. Hopefully turns to spring very quickly wherever you are. I like that little screen and pop there from uh, from uh, Frank Rogers until he was wide right with the three. But a nice little set there got him a better shot than some of the possessions they've had previously this half. A little surprise on the offensive end for Rodgers, just one of six from the field in this one, four rebounds and just the two points. You know, we touched on his story in, uh, in the opening. We haven't really talked about it a lot. I mean, uh, San Jose State went through a really uh, huge roster transition last year. A number of guys were uh, basically told to leave the program uh, in Dave Wojcik's second year. Uh, Frank Rodgers was one of them. And uh, while they've been... Uh, uh, predictably vague about the circumstances. Uh, they have said he made some poor decisions, that he violated team rules, and was effectively out of the program. Uh, Dave Wojcik told us today that he came back a month later. They had a very animated, passionate two-hour-plus discussion about letting him back on the team and, and basically said no. And a month later or two months later, he came back again and said, Coach, I want to be here. There's a beautiful drive. Yeah, very, very nice drive by Williams and the finish and the three-point play opportunity here. Um, came back again and said, Coach, basically, I want to be here. I'm willing to do what it takes. We'll go back to that story in a second. We'll look at uh, Williams' drive here. A little ball fake, gets in the lane off the bounce. Good protection there. Transfers to the left hand. I like that. Easy finish around the rim and the three-point play opportunity. But he came back and basically said, you know, tell me what I need to do. I want to be part of this. And uh, they laid down, the athletic director and, and Wojcik, uh, Coach Wojcik laid down a a plan that included academic performance, it included uh, behavioral performance, and uh, since that point, he's done every single thing right for this team and has become not only their leading scorer and rebounder, but also a, 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 a crucial leader in the clubhouse for such a young team. Uh, Dave Wojcik told us this morning that this will be a story that he will tell to future generations of San Jose State players, sort of the transformation of uh, Frank Rogers from a kid who was kicked out of the program to a, a leader in, of this caliber in, in the course of the year. And there we see Rodgers driving and drawing the foul. Strong move with the left hand, and he'll graduate too. He will. Yes. They were uh, very, very pleased at the beginning of the game today during the senior day activities. Uh, very emotional hug from uh, Coach Wojcik to uh, Rodgers, uh, and it looked uh, extremely sincere. Uh, you know, D uh, Dave Wojcik's trying to build a culture here, and Frank Rodgers went from a player that was killing the culture here in certain ways to somebody that is now in, an embodiment of the culture and somebody who also got his, his degree. Rodgers a 71% free throw shooter looking though for still his first of the afternoon. And as he makes the second now gets some three points for the senior. You know, I don't want to jinx this game, but we're 10 minutes away from the nightmare scenario of overtime for the Boise State <laughs> travel plans. Uh, a very tough turnaround. I, I, I was looking to book a trip out of here after the game tonight to get back to Denver. You you the same. Yeah. There aren't as many flights as you think coming out of San Jose late in the day because of the time zone differences. Boise, obviously, not a uh, high, heavily trafficked route uh, to begin with. So, uh, you know, they have a very, very tight plan to get out of here. Uh, they were hoping it would be a little bit easier than this and the clock would be running a little bit quicker. Well, I think at this point, they want to get that win if they can, most certainly. Jackson with a hesitation. Some folks thought he might have pulled up that pivot foot. Webb's three-point attempt is no good. Here come the Spartans. Clark has his pass knocked away, but last touched by Webb. It will stay at this end. Good recovery. It looked like J.C. Hillsman had an angle there. Finally, Clark looked up and saw him. Good recovery there. I believe it was Webb who knocked it out of bounds. So it will stay at this end. Jalen James looks to trigger the inbound to Clark, guarded by Duncan. Out top for Gary Williams. He's putting together quite a game this afternoon. When you look forward to next year and beyond for San Jose State, there's a wide open three, can't knock down by J.C. Hillsman. Uh, you're looking at a guy like Brandon Clark, and I just noted this on Twitter a couple of minutes ago. 
the next evolution of a guy like him is going to have to be uh, offensive creation. He's going to have to be able to do more with the ball in his hands. Right now he gets the ball on the perimeter, looks a little uncertain, not very confident in his ability to put the ball on the floor or quickly rise and fire from the arc. Very, very good off cuts, screens, around the rim, offensive rebounds, transition. The next evolution of Brandon Clark, if he can add that game where he's on the ball effective and can create offense, he's going to be a very, very good player. Gary okay, Williams hit with a personal foul, his second. Drimmick's three-point attempt off the front of the rim, and here is Clark getting creative with the basketball, taking it to one of the best players in the league in James Webb, and he scores the bucket with an opportunity for three-point play. Take that, me, as, uh, as Brandon Clark said. I'll show you what I can do with the ball in my hands. An open court situation, beautiful reverse, spin it off the glass, and one, and the little squatting celebration to boot. Terrific play for the freshman. He's having a fantastic game today. And meanwhile, James Webb picks up his fourth personal foul, so expect to see him go spend significant time on the bench. San Jose State trying to pull off the upset. They're up four with 9-10 to go in San Jose. Spartans on a 6-0 run as Dave Wojcik talking to his young team and an opportunity to pull off a trademark. This would be one of those, you don't, I don't know if you call it a program defining win in the, in the traditional sense, but seeing where this program has been, where they're at, where they're trying to be, get to, a win over the defending conference champions on their home floor would be a big feather in their cap. It would be a nice addition to the win that they had over their rival Fresno State yeah. here earlier in the year. If you beat the number two and the number three seeds in the conference tournament, uh, that would be a terrific development for them. And we talked earlier, uh, you know, Owen uh, Ofer in the league last season. Yeah. To go from Ofer, I mean, you know, o zero wins can mean a lot of things. Last year it meant basically rock bottom for the program, the roster overhaul and the, and the dismissals and all that type of stuff. To get to four conference wins if they can pull this off, including good quality home wins, like you said, over Fresno and now potentially over Boise, that's a stepping stone. Now, Dave Wojcik said the next thing they need to do is learn how to win a road game in the conference, but, you know, it's not an easy league to win in the road, so this would be one of those wins that they could take. And then you look, you look forward. Again, we mentioned this earlier in the telecast. It's possible that these two teams are playing again later this week with a lot more at stake, especially for Boise State. So this type of performance has to be really, really encouraging. Privately, San Jose State's looking at the bracket and saying, you know what, there are a couple teams here that we don't feel like we're overmatched against. It would be interesting to see once they get into the tournament based off a performance like this, whether they can get into that quarterfinal round and give somebody else a scare. With that free throw attempt, Clark now with a new season slash career high of 19 points, eclipsing the 18 he had back in December the 22nd. Well, Boise Clark, State. a coming out party here for young Brandon Clark. I was going to say, Boise State still stuck on one three-point make today. They are, you know, not a great three-point shooting team, but they're a, they're a three-point volume team for sure. Uh, so some of them go in just the, by nature of the number of shots they take. There's a good drive from Mikey Thompson. Uh, we called for a little bit more of that in the first half. Still hasn't really seen it. But to only have one three-point make with the numbers that they shoot in the course of a game is, is unusual for Boise State and the key to why they're still down by three. Thompson has gone into double figures 20 times this year. That's just his fourth point of the afternoon. Pass tipped. 
Loose ball picked up here by Boise State. A little unlucky there. That was actually a nice look from Frank Rogers on the catch in the paint and a little, uh, little drop of dime down on the cross cut there. But uh, a nice move. That was a nice move by Nick Duncan there, but uh, missed wildly on the layup. A number of, uh, not, not just misses on those types of opportunities, but Boise State hasn't hit rim on a number of those close-in opportunities today. Uh, I don't know if the athleticism of Clark and others are, are doing a number on them, but uh, very inefficient around the rim at times today. Another talented freshman, J.C. Hudson, on the floor as well for San Jose State. Three-pointer on the way from Onwas and no good. So Onwas unable to convert to three. Here are the Broncos with a chance to tie it with a triple of their own. Hutchinson tries to feed a cutting Duncan, knocked out of bounds. I believe Clark the last one to touch it, so the Broncos will maintain possession after this timeout on the floor. Leon Rice will try to shake the cage of his Boise State team. They trail by three with 7.25 to go. CampusInsiders.com will bring you all of the hoops action directly from Houston during the men's Final Four. Follow Campus Insiders for players' analysis, game predictions, and for what's trending on the ground. Get the inside scoop on all the Final Four action on CampusInsiders.com. Promises to be as it is every year. An exciting Final Four this year in Houston. Promises to be an exciting Final 7-25 here. Yes. San Jose State not going away. Uh, I, I beg your pardon, earlier I said one three-point make for Boise State. They're actually two for 16 now for the game. Uh, still, uh, there's nothing that really has consistently worked offensively for Boise today. Um, and here they are in another late shot clock possession. Mikey Thompson now falling, trying to create. See if Drimmick with two to shoot. Have to heave it. Yeah, back rim. Uh, you know, they're just not, there's nothing consistent. They get one or two good offensive possessions. They get a layup attempt. Then they run a possession like that. There's just nothing that's clicked today. Meanwhile, San Jose State, we mentioned at the half, 12 turnovers. So the first 13 minutes of this half, only two turnovers. So while their offensive possessions might have been a little less efficient, they're at least not giving up the cheap, they're not giving up the cheap runouts. Now it's two for 17 after that Drimmick miss from three-point range. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's a game that's there for, for San Jose State to take. I mean, you look at this, we talked about the NCAA tournament. You look at stages of a tournament, you know, when a 14 seed can win a game. This is when San Jose State has to start to believe they can win this game. And Clark on the miss. The putback and one. I think, uh, I think Gary Williams was trying to lob that, but it ended up as a really nice pass that uh, Clark came down with. I believe, Yeah, that was a lob that he just couldn't go up right away with, but instead comes down with it right back up in Nick Duncan's chest, the contact, and the bucket. Another another two points and potentially three for Brandon Clark now on the verge of a huge double-double today. 21 points, maybe 22 with this free throw, along with nine rebounds. Duncan hit with his second personal foul. Clark unable to convert. So he will stay at 21 points as that career high continues to grow. With a lot of time left in this one, 637. Mentioned Drimmick. 
28 points away from becoming the school's all-time leading scorer. Well, it appears he's on pace to get that in this one this afternoon with nine points. Spartans back the other way. This, is, this has not been a good performance from Boise State, but credit San Jose State. And again, a, a sloppy execution there. A little, a little pass that goes awry, quick turnover in the run out. Yeah, the cutter drops it, here's the run out. Aggressive one pass, and uh, you know, basically puts Drimmick in a bad situation, doesn't quite get there, and two more free throws for San Jose State. Second personal for Drimmick. I, I don't know about you, I haven't seen evidence in the first 34 minutes of this game that Boise State is gonna come out of this with the victory. I, I mean, you know, I, on, on the balance, I think San Jose State has been the better team in this game. Well, certainly in a game like this, when you're facing an underdog, you come in as Boise State, you, you hear a lot of times, it's a lot of the same theory in football as well. You want to get out, you want to put your foot on their throat and end this thing, take away their will and spirit early on. And Boise State did not do that, and the Spartans have just continued. This confidence has swollen throughout this game now as they lead by seven points, 58-51. Yeah, they've, they've seemed very comfortable the entire game. That doesn't mean they're necessarily playing well. Um, you know, we're looking now at a seven-point deficit. This is the largest of the game for Boise State. They can cut into it. Well, I, I think that was a non-shooting foul, sixth foul. So a uh, sideline or baseline out of bounds here. But, uh, you know, this is a game where Boise State, from the jump, has not looked like, like Boise State is going to impose their will on them. They're a transition-based team, but Bo but San Jose State has managed to keep it a half-court game. And other than Webb, who's a terrific athlete, this is not a team that's really going to devastate you with athleticism. Wow, is that oh, it for that, Webb? That might be it for Webb. Wow. Yep, on the reach-in, and that's uh, boy, that's a that's a big blow. Leon Rice had gambled having him in the game with six minutes left, down seven, and uh, that's the fifth foul on a cheap reach-in for. Uh, one of the better players in the league in James Webb. Frustrating day for Webb. Started on the first possession, he misses the shot there, and really just, you know, scrapping for the ball. I, you know, I don't know if it was actually a foul, but you gotta be smarter than that with four fouls reaching in like that with the ref staring right at it. Uh, he'll now watch the rest of the game on the bench and his teammates, just like at San Diego State, yeah. are gonna have to bail, bail him out. So Webb has yet to sit down, almost in disbelief. As it's Onwas, makes the first of two free throw attempts, a 58% free throw shooter. Parked at six points, looking for a seventh, and he gets it. You know, I hate to be the amateur psychologist looking here at this game, now nine point lead with six minutes left for San Jose State. You haven't seen any range of emotion from Boise State today. It's been very neutral. There hasn't been animation. There hasn't been really any frustration. There hasn't been any barking at each other. Uh, a very, very passive showing from Boise State. This can't be anything that is pleasing Leon Rice because he knew coming into the game that this was possible. Uh, and it's bearing out his worst nightmare in terms of this game is bearing out. That stopped a slow day 10-2 run. Is Jackson able to score? So now if you're San Jose State, you know, you, you, you are caught here seven-point lead with 520 left. You want to run as much clock as possible to cut the number of possessions down here so your defense can do its job and try to close this out. But we've seen them struggle when they get into late shot clock opportunities here. I'd like to see them remain a little bit more aggressive than they are in this possession where they're now in a bit of trouble. And the shot clock down to five to shoot. Yeah, not a great shot there from Isaac Thornton. Uh, had to create on his own uh, difficult shot, and now Boise State had a chance to cut it to five. And a nice feed. And a good look there from Paris Austin. And it's all for he draws the personal foul. On Wass commits his third. But from Boise's standpoint, I mean, Leon Rice told us a couple times this morning that basically this type of an environment in a game like this against the last place team in the league, you have to create your own energy. Boise State has brought zero energy to this game. I mean, I've seen them play else this year. They've been in very up-tempo, exciting games. You know, guys fist pumping, making shots, hailstorms of threes. Uh, it just it hasn't been here today. Leon Rice suspected this was a trap game in between senior night and the start of the Mountain West tournament, and it's bearing out that way. And and they're in a, they're in a good deal of trouble now, down six with five minutes left. Yeah, when we asked him earlier today, as Boise State now trying to show a little bit of press. Trying to force maybe a mistake from the Spartans bringing the 
ball up the floor. Haven't seen much of that today. There was some suspicion that there would be some pressing to try to force the, the kind of suspect ball handling of San Jose State into some early turnovers. Now it's sort of a game situation requirement. They have to try to start forcing some empty possessions here. And there's one of them. Yep. Jackson tries to get ahead of what much rather, I'm sure, had the layup. I, I am a little surprised. I mean, maybe this is something that, that Boise doesn't want to show too much of today. You know, it's something they want to keep in the bag a little bit more for the, for the conference tournament. But I am a little bit surprised with the way that this game is going, the tempo and sort of the flatness level of his team, that Leon Rice hasn't gone to a little bit more of, of pressure on defense just to get his guys active, get them running around the floor, try to disrupt this a little bit. There, it was just a sloppy dribble that got loose and a run out and a foul, and now they're going to the line for two. Well, Thornton will come to the bench with his third personal, and Dave Roach is going to put Cody Schwartz back on the floor. Excuse he, too, still, has four personal fouls. Still one and one here, not a two-shot foul. And Jackson, a 72% free throw shooter, hits the front end of the one and one. I've been watching a little bit too much NBA. I was thinking clear path foul, you know, uh, yeah. two shots in the ball. Uh, but uh, no need for the one and one there, both to go down. And uh, now Boise State back within four, 437 Jackson. left. Jackson now with his seventh point. Yeah, we, we talked again to Leon Rice. His number one concern was enthusiasm. We said, Coach, what are the keys today? And it wasn't a matchup. It wasn't a mismatch. It wasn't getting back on defense, making threes, doing well in the post. No, it was maintain enthusiasm and energy, and they haven't had it. Interesting call here live. I thought he got all ball, and on replay, I think he got all ball. A little bit of a gift there for San Jose State. And uh, for, uh, Princeton Onwas going to the line for two. That also now puts, if you're talking about a comeback situation, now Boise State's in the double bonus, so they don't even have any opportunities now for the one and one fouling type situation later to try to steal a possession here. Uh, very valuable potentially for San Jose State, which is uh, not a particularly good, and I'm using that kind of politely, not a particularly good free throw shooting team. So uh, having two opportunities instead of the one and one could be pretty significant for them. Well, Anwas at the line looking to add to his po point totals. He has eight. The senior from Houston playing his final game here at the event center. At San Jose State, one of the seniors honored before the game. And hoping to go out a winner here in front of the home crowd. And he makes a free throw and extends the lead to six points with approaching four minutes to go. Nice hesitation on the baseline and the reverse is the good there from Paris Austin. First two points of the afternoon. As we approach four minutes to go, the Spartans in no hurry to force the offense. Duncan jumps up, tries to defend and make a stop, but he is going to be hit with the blocking foul, his third in this one. Exciting 3.55 to be sure from San Jose as the Spartans lead by four. Brandon Clark, the 6'8 freshman from Phoenix, blowing out of the water 
his 8.3 point average per game with a career high 21. Looking really, really nice. 21 points, as you said, nine rebounds, too. And, you know, it feels like he's just been even more active than that. He's been instrumental on both ends of the floor. He only has one blocked shot officially in the game, but really a presence with his length and athleticism. There's the beautiful catch and the and the, and the N1 on Nick Duncan there. Uh, he and, uh, somewhat surprisingly, Gary Williams Jr. being the two offensive forces today, as Frank Rogers' offense uh, really has not been here today for the Spartans. But they're in good position now, 3.55 to go up by four and going to the line. Anwa sat the strike to shoot two. 58% free throw shooter. He has nine points in his final game in front of the home crowd, and nine of 10 from the line. And make him 10 of 11. Boy, the surprises continue for a 58% free throw shooter. It's been that kind of day for Boise. He's that, feeling you know, that, it, huh? that stroke does not look like a 58% shooter either. That looks no, nice. No, not at all. Not, not a lot of for 12. Not a lot of luck in those going down. Those look really, really, really sound. All 11 of his points for Onwas coming from the stripe. 3:40 to go in this one. Does Boise State have a comeback in them? Like they did against San Diego State here not long ago. What made it memorable for that win at Viejas Arena was well, the Aztecs unstoppable when leading with five minutes to go. A streak of, I think, 164 wins when leading at home with five minutes to go. Boise State snapped it. And helped by what? Was it seven straight free throw misses? Yes. I think for San Diego State in the final minute. So uh, there's a good call from the rep. Yep. Got the trip there on the run out. But yeah, that was a wild. I tweeted that actually earlier. The, the game chart, the percentage, I, I think at one point in that game, Boise State had something like a 0.3% chance to, to win, down nine with a minute 12 left, uh, and then ended the game on a 12 0 run. Went pretty remarkable as uh, Drimmick hits the deck hard. He draws the foul there from James. Jalen James. But the officials at the table, Andy, what might they be looking for here? Any that's guess? A, that's a, might be looking for a flagrant foul of sort. If he reached out and intentionally tripped him, it's possible. Uh, I'd like to just see them call the common foul and get on with the sure. game, honestly. But uh, so here, yeah, he did grab his leg and, and tripped him. Uh, both legs, actually. That's a, Maybe he could play D-back for you know, the Spartans as well. <laughs> but uh, uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens here with that call. Certainly an, an intentional uh, act. And we'll see what the, uh, what the referees determine here. Looks like they're going to bring Leon Rice and Dave Wojcik together to explain their determination. A little Grayson Allen action there, you know, with the, uh, using yes. the arm this time instead of the leg. But uh, a shoestring tackle, uh, wrong sport for uh, the Spartans in this case. Two adversaries today, but very close. As Dave Wojcik mentioned, very good friends with his former boss being on staff. Yep, they did call it a flagrant. So it is going to be a flagrant one. Goes against James as we take another look. Yeah, so the loss of the dribble here, and then the hook with one arm, and then the reach out with a second arm. Uh, referees spotted it, and uh, it's two shots for Drimmick. And a fourth personal foul for James. Drimmick stays at nine points in this one. And this is the free throw attempt. the second to give him 10. And now obviously the big part of the intentional foul call, two shots and possession now. So Boise State picks up an extra possession here down by five. Drimmick has been coming off the bench and with that free throw now ties him for second place all time in school history at Boise State. Also fourth in career scoring in the league as well. He won't catch Jimmer Fredette. I don't know if anybody will. Nearly 2,600 points in his career. Jimmer was a once in a uh, once in a long while phenomenon at the college level for sure. James Drys picks up the dribble and they want to call a timeout. Dave Wojcik's team can they close things out here in this final 252? As they want a quick 30 second timeout and they have a five point lead and and not only a great opportunity to win the game but boy what an end of game learning experience for this young team. 
Yeah, I mean, you can use this as a teaching experience now for the knockout tournament they're about to be in. And they feel like, you know, they're going to be in the 6 11 game. It's very possible they'll play uh, UNLV, you know, on its quote unquote home court, even though the court is not the same. It's a, technically a neutral venue for the tournament. But obviously, UNLV, the home, the home team with the crowd that should be there. Uh, but a weakened team that's going to be missing Derek Jones and, and other, you know, so it's a possibility that you can take this. You look at this experience with 246 left. They really are now, if I'm Dave Wojcik, I'm telling his team, we're basically three or four good offensive possessions away from closing this one out. If you can extend this down, you get down to the final minute, you're still up five or six points. Bo Boise State's going to have to put you on the line. You're going to then have to make free throws to close it out. So you really have to gap this next minute 30, minute 40 in the game, get a couple of good defensive stops if you can. But really, it's going to be on this end. Get a couple of good possessions. Try to keep the lead where it is. Inbounds pass tipped. Clark comes down with it. As Duncan nearly took it away, that would have been a good turnover for Boise State, but Clark able to grab the loose basketball. Ten on the shot clock. Rodgers with it. Schwartz for three. That's no good. Oh, that and was going to hit yeah. Rodgers with the foul. Compounded by Rodgers. I thought Rodgers was a little indecisive there. It looked like he had the elbow jumper that he could have taken. Not, not having a great day shooting, obviously, so a little bit hesitant there. Kicked it back out. A good look for Schwartz. Looked on line from where we were sitting long, and then compounding it, Frank Rodgers knocks him down. Uh, you got to call that. And uh, now two shots. Uh, they're in the bon double bonus as well, so now they're giving three points potentially to Boise State here with 2.28 left. Alford makes the first free throw. It's been a good ball game. It has. Yeah, it's been enjoyable. Maybe not for Boise State fans, <laughs> but it's it's been enjoyable for uh, courtside neutrals. How about that? Alford unable to convert the second, a 78% free throw shooter, is the redshirt senior from Carson, California. So he stays at four points right at his season average. Boise State struggling from the line again today. That's been a problem of theirs in some close losses yep. this year. What was that that Leon Rice said? Well, uh, there's the Matador defense and the layup. Leon Rice said the two things that don't last very long is dogs that chase cars and teams that don't make free throws. And right now, that's really hurting the uh, the Broncos today, among other things. Dremick somehow gets a wide open look down the lane and converts for two more. We give him 12 on the afternoon and a quick whistle and a timeout for Leon Rice and Boise State, a 30-second timeout. And boy, what a way for Onwas to finish again here on his home floor. The redshirt senior from Houston came into the game averaging just over 10 points a game, now at 13, 11 of those coming at the free throw line. And as you mentioned, as a 58, 59% free throw shooter who uh, maybe he's like Hassan Whiteside. He's been working on the side yeah. at the gym and suddenly is, I mean, he looks like an 80% guy from the line today. His stroke looks terrific. So, you know, we talked about game situation about 45 seconds ago. Now, still up four with the ball, two minutes to go. These are the types of things you work on practice all the time. All right, this is our game situation. What do we want from this possession? Principally right now, the first thing I want from this possession, if I'm San Jose State, is to run as much of the 30 seconds off as I can. But you don't want to do it at the expense of your aggressiveness because they're not going to win this game on 66 points, I don't believe. So you want to, you know, if the shot is there, it's available. Uh, and now a little full court pressure here from Boise State. They're going to have to, uh, you know, navigate this to get into the front court. But I, I'd like to see San Jose State remain aggressive. I like the drive on the last possession there. Um, and, you know, if you can get something like that, you certainly take it this time around as well. Well, 159 remaining here in San Jose. You're watching us here on Campus Insiders. No, some college basketball fans who enjoy this close game down the stretch. Watch it on their mobile phone, their tablet, on their computer. I invite you to tweet at him, text him. Have him come on over to join us here on CampusInsiders.com for this final 145 as the Spartans looking to pull off an upset on their home floor, 66-62 on Boise State. They're again a little loose with the dribble. And again, I'm, I'm a little surprised that Boise State hasn't pressured more in this game, uh, whether it's full quarter or in the half court. Wide open look there, huge shot, can't go down. Good rebound there from Boise State. Uh, you know, they look like, finally, it's like desperation has kicked in and suddenly the energy is a little bit better. But it's taken them 36, 37 minutes to get to this point. And a sense of urgency, you do get that sense right now. And a travel on Jalen James as he came down the floor. That's a little unlucky there. He went up well for the rebound. Looked like he was going to be undercut or bumped, and then it looked like the Boise State player, I didn't see which number it was, but the Boise State player like avoided the contact right at the last second, and uh, basically James came down with the ball and fell. Uh, and another possible opportunity here for Boise State. 
So now Duncan will inbound it underneath the Broncos basket. Comes all the way out top for Alford. Leaves it for Thompson. Now to Duncan, now a whistle away from the basketball. I believe they're going to get Onwas with the personal. And now Mikey Thompson to the free throw line. Winston Onwas with his fourth personal foul. Not what you want to do. Uh, Mikey Thompson, uh, you know, north of 80%, almost 82% for the season on a, oh, I'm sorry, it's Anthony Drimmick at the line. Also not necessarily what you want to do. He's pretty decent from the line as well. Not having a great day, though. Uh, just has looked flat, looked a little bit off. A lot of his shorts have been, sh uh, a lot of his shots, rather, have been short. There's another one that creeps over the edge of the rim. Uh, really not a great day for the senior, but he has a chance here to pull uh, Boise State within two. He's one of those players, he's right at his average with the 13th point there on the free throw, an opportunity to make it 14 here. And to continue to cut into this lead and make it a two-point game, unable to convert. And another missed free throw. And it's Clark who came away with the rebound, almost lost it. But there's Thornton. There's a good little trap. <laughs> it's amazing to me they're using Duncan at the point of the trap, which I think is uh, wildly entertaining. But uh, I would like to see them put a little bit more, send a double, do something to disrupt San Jose State here. That rebound for Clark, given his fifth double-double of the season. Now 10 rebounds, under a minute to go. A three-point lead here for the Spartans. Rogers kicks it out for Schwartz as the shot clock expires. And off the mark, a 30-foot attempt from distance nearly for Schwartz. Thompson quickly back the other way. His wild shot on the runner, no good. Rogers comes down with it. The player was blocked, and now Boise State, I think, really honestly, I think they need to foul. I think they need to extend this game here. I don't like playing this out with only a nine or eight second differential on the shot clock when you're down by three. Decent time out here from Dave Wojcik, wants to get set. Uh, I don't believe, I would not, if I'm Leon Rice, I'm not playing this possession out right here. I think you need multiple possessions here. With the way Boise State shot the three today, I think uh, uh, believing you're gonna get a stop and then coming down and hitting a three before they can foul you intentionally, uh, I don't like that strategy uh, in my opinion. There you see Thompson driving and his shot partially blocked. Rogers comes down with the rebound. It's interesting that the players that have made such an impact in this game, as you look down through the box score, you got Brandon Clark with 21 points. On was with 13. Gary Williams Jr., who averages six points a game, or more than doubled that with 14. And the way they've been able to shoot the basketball, especially at the line, Andy, 18 of 21 from the free throw line in this game and uh, counter to what Boise State is doing. But going back to this game situation, Leon Rice has a decision to make here. He either has to sacrifice the possession here and try to put a bad free throw shooter on the line if he can. Or what I would do, my preference here, is to press very hard, is to send guys, send doubles, try to extract a steal here. And we know San Jose State is prone to giving the ball up off the dribble. They can get a run out, they can get another possession here like that. If not, if you waste three or four or five seconds here, can't get the steal, I would foul. I would not let the last 17, 18 seconds of the shot clock run off. I just don't think that's the winning scenario here for Boise State to assume they can get a stop, secure the rebound, and then come back down. And that's a situation with eight seconds left that then, if, if San Jose State's in position to, they can foul the ball handler and put them on the line, not let them get a three-point shot off. There's enough time for San Jose State to do that. So I would try uh, not to let the clock run down here if I'm Boise. See what the Spartans do. Inbound comes from Clark to Gary Williams, Jr. There they are sending a second guy there. About an eight-second difference and now, between the shot clock okay. and the game clock. Not bad. I mean, I, I wouldn't have minded sending another double to the corner there where Rodgers was trapped. If you had a guy that could rotate over, you had Duncan had sealed off the baseline there. I thought they actually had a pretty good position there to try to uh, force a little bit of a, a bad situation for Rodgers, but they're putting a guy on the line who is a uh, – Excuse me, about a 71% free throw shooter on the year. He's going to shoot two. Uh, Boise State clearly wanting to miss at least one here. Rodgers. It's definitely quiet. He could have heard a pin drop. As the fans want no distraction. And James Webb, all he can do is sit and watch as he's been out for a considerable amount of time here in the second half. San Jose State entering the game was in the bottom 20 in Division I in free throw percentage. And, uh, well, I just jinxed them. But they've done a great job today at the line taking advantage of their opportunities. Shot clock is off. Don't need a three here if it's not there, but that's a decent look for Drimmick. Drimmick off the mark as San Jose State comes down with a rebound. A pass ahead here to Owen Wass. The senior tries to go. He draws the foul from Drimmick. 
And with four seconds left, that should pretty much wrap it up here for San Jose State. What can you say? That they've been the better team today. A heck of a win on senior afternoon here in San Jose State. Uh, the crowd appreciative on their feet, clapping, applauding. Uh, another signature, as you said, win in the rebuild here at San Jose State. Terrific win for Dave Wojcik and his Spartans, and they fully deserved it today. Now well, Wojcik gathers his team around, and boy, we spent a good amount of time before the game talking to him, and well, he really believes, loves, he said, loves being with the players in the practices. Onwas misses the first free throw off the front, the timeout quickly. As uh, they're San not Jose a State yeah. takes their final 30. There are not a lot of plays to run down four with 4.3 seconds left or potentially down five. So it uh, looks like unless San Jose State does something remarkably uh, uh, unsmart that they're going to win this game. Um, and now they kick on to the conference tournament. And, and you, you, you said, Dave Wojcik, we spoke to other people around the program before the game. There's a little bit of a quiet confidence building here that they've got something going on. Now that something is not, you know, San Diego State 15 and two something, but you got to start with the baby steps somewhere. This is a program that that moved into a conference that was way better than its status as a basketball program. And with that is the on-court stuff. With that is recruiting and facilities and investment and just an understanding of how to run a program in a top eight, top you know, seven conference in the country in a lot of years. So uh, this is a good step forward for San Jose. State. It'll be interesting to see if they can carry the momentum forward to Las Vegas. Onwas makes the free throw. 12 of 14 for Onwas behind the line. And the inbound pass is tipped. Drimmick, are they going to be able to get a shot off? No, as San Jose State, and fittingly so, the senior on his last game on this floor at the event center, puts his hands around the basketball, locking up a Spartans five-point win, 68-63 the final in upset fashion over Boise State, the likely now third seed going into the Mountain West Conference Tournament. Yeah, this locks it up. They have the tiebreaker over Nevada. Boise State will be the three seed, and I believe they will play in the final quarter final now uh, this week in Las Vegas. Well, what an exciting game here at the Event Center in San Jose State. For my broadcast partner, Andy Glockner, I'm Ray Crawford saying good afternoon from San Jose, where the final score is 68 to 63. Brandon Clark leading all scores of freshman for the Spartans with 21 points. For more live Mountain West broadcast features and information, go to campusinsiders.com. This has been an exclusive presentation of the Mountain West Network on Campus Insiders. So long, everybody. Good job. All right. Coming up in just a few minutes, the most